Okay, well, good afternoon everybody, once again. Welcome back to Plot. It's uh, 4 o'clock here in the afternoon in the northeast, and the sunshine's just starting to come back out again. So I've managed to pull up the garden. I've been busy down home again this afternoon. I know it's been a few weeks since I made a video, but uh, I thought I'd crack on the day and uh, see if I can get a little video uh, show you what we've been up to the last couple of weeks. Uh, as I say, I've been really busy. I've been posting on my Facebook page as much as I can, but um, as I say, if you're, if you're waiting for the videos to come out, um, you can always catch one on my Facebook page. Just uh, go over there and have a have a look at what we're up to. As you can see over the far side, there's uh, two, four, six, eight, nine trees of pansies there. Uh, 24 blocks. I've, uh, I've managed to put most of them up. Um, I'm busy on with the polyanthus now. And in the next tunnel, I've got um, foxgloves and I've got uh, sweet willing to put up. So I'm, uh, as I say, in between working the plot, trying to repair the plot, and uh, doing all the other bits and pieces in between. It's been a, it's been a really challenging time this last couple of weeks. Um, not forgetting, we've just come out of lockdown uh, last week, me and the missus. So um, you know, we've just had a take our time. Uh, the tomatoes as well have been absolutely fantastic. Um, the cherry ones, the large ones, the giant orange, they've all been really good. Uh, we've had a first class crop out of them. And of course, if you can see now, we're starting to thin them down. The plants that have come uh, come to the end of their life, we'll take them straight out and uh, we're left with a, a good leaf mulch on the bottom of the floor. What will happen with this, it'll get turned in and we'll get our spring cabbage put in here um, in September. Now, I will be making a video next week because I want to crack on with the... Um, with the hanging baskets, the strawberries. So we'll go up in a minute and we'll have a we'll have a chat about the strawberries. As I say, I haven't made a video for a couple of weeks now, but uh, I think I'm just starting to catch up on myself now. I'm nearly finished this tunnel here. Uh, as you can see, it's like a builder's backyard up there. I'll show you when we go out. But uh, what I want to do is to show you some of these big boys and these are giant orange, absolutely marvellous. I'm not so keen on them, but Roger loves them. Um, he loves the taste of them, and of course he likes the giant, the Americans, but uh, these tomatoes here have been absolutely marvellous, really first class. What I'll do with these, I'll take, I'll just take the one off there, um, keep one for seed for next year, because uh, there's been absolutely some bruises. If you look in the most that one there, it's stuck in there, it's actually stuck in the side of the, um, where the, the truss has grown. I don't know if I can ease that through. It's a shame because it's a massive tomato. As I say, there's some absolutely corkers on here. But uh, really pleased with them. We've had a shift of drums. Uh, as you know, the tunnels. The drums usually sit in this corner. Problems we've had is on the bottoms where the where the um, where the main sills are, the main posts, they've, they've rotted away. Of course, this tunnel's 15 year old. And what we had along here, staging boards. And you can see the staging clips that were holding them in. And of course, with the, the barrels of water being here, we had to pull the barrels out. Put all the sheeting out. This is the old black membrane that was down. No doubt this will go back down in some places, but I've, I've ordered a new roll online, so we'll get that done. And uh, this is what it's been all about. New sills now. These had rotted away. And of course, the two years that I've been injured, there's not been much maintenance done, it, so I've spent the last month ripping out all these timbers. Renewing them and putting all brand new nets along the fronts, new timbers under here, and of course the polythene will go into there. What I'll do is I'll order a meter, a meter roll, but we'll put the the meter roll on the skirts, and the top end just stays on where it is. So it means I can take this off each year when the cabbages or the potatoes are in this end, uh, or put it back on when the tomatoes are in. Next year it'll not be so bad. Um, this will be full of um, spring cabbage, and then the the um, the courgettes. The, uh, the sweet corn, everything else will go into here next year. They say we like to we like to um, move our tunnels around so there's not one crop gets in it um, uh, more than once a year. It's stacks of grapes on the top here, absolutely hundreds and bunches. I think what I'm going to do next year, because there's not a lot to get used, I'm going to make some wine. I'm going to look for a good uh, look for a good recipe. Take a bunches down, squash them, and try and get a few bottles of wine out of them, and uh, I think that'll make a That'll make an excellent uh, finish to the end of the year. But there, uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with these. Um, as I say, all brand new timbers. And of course, I have uh, the new netting on. This one's already been done. I can just lift this polythene up. 
as you can see, it's all been renewed underneath. New studs right along the bottom. The whole door frame had to come out. A uh, whole new door frame in there. But I'd say solid as a rock there now. And it'll last for another 10 years. And I think by then, me and Roger will be just about there, ready to retire. <laughs> the, uh, the peach tree just there, just went berserk. But I'm leaving it, I'm leaving it until it there, until it sheds its juice at the end of the year. And I'll, I'll cut it right back. Um, trim in a few more, um, a few more of the, the leaders, a few more of the side juice in there. It should make a fantastic uh, bush for next year. But uh, yeah, apart from that, um, everything's going hunky dory. This one, this side is done. The polythene just lying loose at the moment. I'm not so bothered about that, as I say. I've got all the new timbers along the bottom, all the new nets are on. So, what will happen this year is, is this polythene will just be nailed down temporary because it's, uh, it's all split along the far end there. And there'll be a whole new. T There'll be a whole new cover goes on this tunnel there this year. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased the pathway is all nice li being levelled out. It's a bit muddy at the moment, but what I'm planning to do on here is to put the uh, pallets all the way along this, uh, this pathway here. I've got a new membrane to put on first. I'll put some uh, some small stones down, some uh, small piece of paving stone, and set the pallets on there and completely pallet the whole path. So it's just like a, a decking, and it'll be much easier for me and Roger to walk along. And of course I'll have to put some spouts, it's a job that I tried to do well, three years ago before I had my accident, but um, I've got them lying around the garden somewhere, that's guttering, and I'll put some new guttering right way along here, and of course that'll stop the, the water problems coming off the roof and down onto the pathway. So hopefully next year we'll have a nice dry path to walk on. Apart from when it's uh, high and down with rain, like it's just, uh, just going to start again there now, but uh, hopefully I'll get this video finished before it gets too heavy. Okay, well what I want to do is get at the top end and show you how our, uh, how our parents' strawberries and my young, young ones are doing, okay? Right, okay, I'm at the top of the garden now. Oh dear, I hope you can see the, the pear tree. It's absolutely chock a block with pears. It's, we've been uh, really lucky this year. I know it's been, uh, it's been really dry up the north yesterday. We haven't had much rain as what we, we normally have. But the, the, the fruit crops have been absolutely marvellous. That, that pear tree is, is just overhanging with them. Um, I'm going to start taking some of them off this week and uh, ripening them down home. But, uh, yep, the rhubarb was really poorly at the beginning here because it was so dry. But look at it now, it's, uh, it's four foot high. And it's been an absolutely marvellous crop. and keep pulling it and pulling it and pulling it until it comes again. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a beauty of rhubarb. You can see my uh, my next task I've got to do is a, a shed here. I've been sorting all the uh, bits of timber out because I've got to go into the shed next week and uh, all them boards, the weather boards are going to be cut up and they're going to be used to to block the inside of the shed up along the along the sides and some new flooring. So that's the uh, that's the next next task after I get the um, after I get the polytunnels finished. <laughs> but uh, as I say, there's been not much um, there's been not much work to do over the last couple of weeks. I've uh, I really had an attempt to concentrate in the garden, I've just had to leave that to Roger. But uh, there's a lot of jobs where uh, I've got to get stuck in and get um, get the best out of them. But um, here's where we are with the strawberries. And, uh, and of course, if you remember, I fought the Albion last year. Um, I was really disappointed in them when they come. Dry rooted, uh, bare rooted plants. And it took ages to take off. Um, and of course, I had some spraying problems with them. I had feeding problems with them, I had watering problems with them, but that was just with the parent, pl the plant that they sent out. As I say, I wasn't happy at all. But lo and behold, here we are, and there's mine. Now, these are parent plants. These were the um, the runners. Yeah, these were the the, the, the bare root plants that were sent last year. What we did, we put them straight up in the small pots in the greenhouse in December when they come out. And then I transplanted them in the January into the baskets when I come up here. Um, and then from the baskets, we took them out of the baskets and we, we took all the runners off them. There's still a few runners sitting around here. It's in the tree of water there, so that's one thing you've got to watch out for when you're, when you're putting the strawberries in your trees. Is if it rains heavy outside, they'll get flooded. Just keep tipping your tree over. But there, there's some of the runners. They're the last of the runners I took. Um, and we've absolutely got, we've got enough to do all the baskets, 24 baskets that go in the bottom polytunnel. So I've got enough to put two plants in each one of them and I've got a few spares for a 
cut the friends up the pot. But they absolutely marvellous pots. Oh, that's the last ones. I'm going to get a couple of... I've still got a room. Um, I've got three colossus here, which I'm going to persevere with. Um, they were looking a bit raggedy last year when I got them, but they... Uh, I've sprayed them, I've cleaned them, I've changed it, the compost, put my own compost in. And uh, I'm getting a couple of runners off them ones. Not many, but they're second year plants. So I'm not really bored, bored about them. As long as I've got two runners for to produce runners off next year, you'll always get stronger plants from a first year plant. If it's a first year rooted runner, that'll throw the, the first year it'll throw loads of runners out for you. It's when it's at the strongest, and then after the second year it starts going back in the third year. So that's why we have a three year regime. The first year, the runners, the young runners will go into baskets. When they come out with baskets, they'll go into pots, mother plants, and then next year. We'll fruit them again in the same pots, but just keep them topped up with a bit of fresh compost on the top and some uh, bone meal and whatnot. Uh, regular feeding, regular spraying, and you should get a good crop after a third year with fruit. I know you could keep them going for a few years after that, but uh, if you're taking new runners every year, you've got really you've got no need to. So a three year regime is perfect for us. After three years, they get a bit too big and the fruits start getting smaller, so we think it's not worth keeping them and we just, we just get shot. Them. I'll show you some of the runners that I've potted up. Should be a good healthy one. And these were potted up. From there, from there, once, once I fill the pots up, I put them up in just a bigger pot, and I stop in these right until September. Now that's a first class plant, absolutely marvellous, I'm over the moon with that. If I tip that out, oh, perfect, look at that, absolutely beautiful. Just fill it nicely with root, and that uh, it's not too pot bound, so it tells me I've even got worms. Uh, <laughs> Little worms in the fresh compost. They're quite happy to stop them there. That tells me I want to get another fortnight over this pot. They're not running around the bottom yet, they're just getting to the bottom there, so I'm there. Uh, timing on these is probably spot on for me. I, I like to have these ready for the beginning of September. But we're only a fortnight away. There's the wind picking up, and I'm wondering what's dropped behind the plums that's dropped off the plum tree. There was absolutely hundreds on the pathway before, and I've had to sweep them all up. And put them in the compost bins, put them in there. The plums are all ripe, and of course they're all dropping down now, so they're making a hell of a racket over there. But uh, as I was saying, this, this is just nice, it's, it's just the way I like it. If you get your, your cuttings not timed to perfection, you shouldn't have any problems. Now, when I make the video next week, we'll get the baskets sorted out, and I'll show you how I line my baskets. And of course, once the baskets are done, I've got the uh, Desiree potatoes in the big bed behind me here. We'll take one row of the Desiree out and then we can lie our baskets along the back there on that bed. The baskets will sit there until January. Don't bring them in any any sooner. Reason being, when your strawberries or in your baskets, what you want, you want them to have a good freezing. A good few nights of really zero temperatures. And that sets up the fruit buds for next year and it sets them into our, um, brings them out of our uh, the hibernation. So, as I say, I never do anything with the plants, I just leave them. If the, if the frost knocks them down, which it will do, the, the, the leaves will fall, they'll go brown, crisp. Once we bring them in January, we can see all that later. But they, I tend to leave the leaves on, I don't cut any back at this stage, because I think if they fall down, they'll cover the roots or the crowns and keep the crowns um, from any damage from frosts and from snows and that. But they'll stop out here until January, as I say. They'll get some really cold nights, and it'll, it'll help them for their, get their fruit buds ready and break a dormancy for next year. And out of them, they'll go over here, they'll go into the big baskets, and we'll hang them up in the bottom pond until like we did this year. And I'm hoping for some first class crops out of these Albion next year. They've been grown, they've been taken the way I like to take the cuttings. They've been grown on in the my compost. They've been sprayed the way I like to spray them, and uh, actually, they're a first class plant. If you've got strawberries like that, then you're doing well. 
I'd say it's an easy job to do from first pegging your root, your root runners down to, uh, to separate them from your parent plant and to bring them on into a bigger pot which is the, exactly the same compost, 3 in 1 compost that I use. I've, I've told you many times how I like to make mine. Plenty of sharp sand and you get good free drainage and that way you'll get a fantastic roof system like that. And you'll go into the baskets and next week, fortnight's time, and they'll just romp away. But I'll show you all that in the next video. So that's where we are with the strawberries. We've got uh, we've got enough to do with 24 baskets, and I've got 6 baskets in the big greenhouse, which I'm going to fill up, because I've got some, some spare ones. And I might keep whatever's left, I might keep a few left, just for... Uh, I've actually got a load of runners over there, no, they're Seng Senga Giganta. I've struggled with them this year, they've been the same. I think I've had a bit of a virus on them. But what I'm intending to do with these, because these these ones here, they haven't been there, um, they've been in the same pots all year. So I'm just going to let them grow on until they, uh, until the die back comes, and I'm going to tip them out. Uh, there's been a load of uh, flea beetle and that around. So I've been spraying them as normal, with my normal spray, a bit of... Uh, soda and that in them. Uh, hopefully I'll get some nice new fresh runners which uh, they're looking like that. I've got uh, two, four, six, eight, nine of them, nine runners. I'm hoping some nice fresh ones. Keep spraying them. And uh, I'm hoping just to, uh, if they have had a bit of virus, I'm hoping that they're going to breed it out for next year. I'll change the compost at the end of this year on these ones. I'll pick them out, put some nice fresh compost, and then they can just sleep outside here in the winter. I'll put them on the back shelf. They can, they can stop there all the winter, um, which they did last year. But for these, these will go on the back bench. These are the Albion, the, the parent plants. They'll sit on the back bench, and then I might bring some of these inside. We're going to have enough baskets uh, to do the bottom polytunnel. That's 24 baskets in the, in the January, and I think I'll take these inside in the February. So it means yeah, the timing of your fruit is you don't get all your fruit together. You know, you're, you're going to space it out over a over a few weeks because strawberries once they come you know you can't uh, you can't eat it more at once but uh, that's what I'm hoping to do with these but that's all that's where we are with the strawberries at the moment I just want you to pop inside and uh, show you how I got on with me uh, with the grapevine okay well it's a little bit warmer in here it's uh, that wind's just starting to pick up there it's getting a little bit there uh, getting a little bit chilly out there right so if you remember at the beginning of the year when I had that uh, that single grapevine root that I potted up into the, into the pot, I took one main stem off it, and then I took some side branches off it, and there you can see some nice little bunches of grapes. Well, that pot, you can, as I say, you can, you can pick it up quite easy. We've made the bottom bunches, <laughs> and of course I've left the top bunches on to show you just what you can achieve in a pot with a young vine and of course if you're having your barbecues and you walk out your greenhouse with that and you stick that on your barbecue table it's a great talking point on how you grow your grapes but there uh, that'll probably go in the garden next day that vine um, I've got some young cuttings down there once again I've got the black grapes I've got a few cuttings of them uh, been a few people asking for them I've dished them out around the on the neighbours and a few of them had them but they're uh, so easy to look after and so easy to care for but um, that was one of the projects I was uh, promising to do this year was to, uh, was to grow the grapevines and so when you're second year cutting that's all it is uh, you take a cutting you grow it on the first year and then your second stem on your second year you should grow you should get a, a small crop of grapes but I allowed them um, we took two off the bottom so that's five bunches were allowed on there for the second year if I had a left all them side branches running next year you'll probably get about 10 15 bunches on there in your third year and then so on and so on and so on it's so easy to do uh, if you want to grow a grapevine but just make sure you, you put it in a proper place um, you don't overshadow your greenhouse there's a lot of people have been commenting on I'm fine in the bottom polytunnels because uh, the way I'm facing the sun comes over in the east sets in the west and I'm getting a still all on the on the polytunnel so the we have got the grapevine it doesn't uh, doesn't bother us but there uh, yeah that's it so I'm going to go down back home now and get stuck in some more potting off as I say I'm going to be busy on with the um, I'm going 
going to be busy on with the foxgloves um, and sweet williams, and I've still got some more polyanthus to put up. I think I've got about another three or four trays of them to do. So I'll get them done. Um, I've got some winter cabbages over there, um, some autumn cabbage, which are, um, I've got three trays of them. So what I'm doing, well, we've lifted the Japanese onions, I'm just going to level that out. They're a little bit late, but uh, no doubt we should still get a cabbage open. Um, I'm going to level that out the weekend and uh, plant the autumn cabbage in there. But uh, next week, or the week after, it'll be like beginning of September, I'll be starting to sow the spring cabbage. And the spring cabbage is for the polytunnel. Now, if you're sowing it outside, if you're growing your cabbages outside, really you should have your, your spring cabbage in now, if you're growing it outside, that is. I'll be setting mine in the bottom polytunnel in one of the benches. It'll grow pretty quick in there because the heat is still got plenty of heat. They'll grow on pretty strong and I'll have nice strong plants or planting out the end of September, which is fine for me in the polytunnel. Really, you, when, you, when you're planting yours outside, you should have your, your plants ready for the beginning to the middle of September. Not too, too much later than that because what you want to do, you want your plants to get well rooted in the soil outside when the temperatures start dropping. Um, you want a, a nice good root system on them. Not too big a plant, but a nice nice root system on them very for when the winter comes. Um, I've stopped growing outside. Um, as I say, if it's not the, if it's not the um, the winter weather up here, the, the cold winds and the harshness that we put up with, um, the birds, the pigeons, the seagulls, you name it, we'll get a lot over here, and we'll have hunting problems trying to grow a good spring cabbage outside. So for the, I think for the last 10 years I've grown them in polytunnels and I've had a first class crop every year. So I'm, uh, I'm not that bothered. As I say, I'll get a nice early cabbage and uh, that's where we like them. But I'll do all that. Next week's video, we'll track on the strawberries. I'll get the strawberry basket started first. I'll get the spring cabbage sown. Uh, that's in trays in the bottom. I'll show you how I sow mine. Just in ordinary trays. Broadcast them. A bit of multi-purpose compost. Plenty of sharp sand. It'll be fine. We'll get them in. Um, I might throw another couple of packets of pansy because I like to overwinter some pansy in my polytunnels. I like to sow them now, be middle of August, and so I can put them off at the end of September, in October. Make small little plants, and they'll just grow away nice and slowly. In the, um, I've got some nice big plants, bigger plants, outside there now, and the bench is hard enough. And they'll go for people that want theirs in September and October. That's fine. Me, I like to keep mine overwintered in the polytunnel and just let them sit, over, sit the winter out. And come February and March, plant up my baskets then, and I don't lose anything. But uh, that's the way I've grown mine for years, and uh, I'm not going to change now. But yeah, that's, um, I'm glad I'm getting up here anyway, and getting a, getting a bit of a video made. Um, I hope I've been a bit of help here. I'll show you how our strawberries are coming on. But um, as I say, next week we'll do the baskets. I'll show you how we'll plop, we'll plop our baskets up. Um, I always use a bag in mine, but if you're growing your baskets outside, don't put a bag in, but I will point it out in the next week's video. Once again, that's a grapevine. If you are following us and want, want to know how to grow grapevine in a pot, that's where you do it. Once them grapes come off, we'll just let the plant die back. Um, what I can do with that is just cut them right back, cut all the seeds through stuff, have a single rod, and plant it up outside somewhere against a fence or wherever. Um, it wouldn't be, if I left it in the pot, I would have to change it, take the top compost up, put some fresh compost in. You could grow it away again in a pot, it just means you've got to keep changing the compost every year, giving it some nice fresh compost, and of course feeding's priority if, uh, if you've got them in pots, because they really are hungry plant scrapes. So, but um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. We've got five nice bunches of it, and of course, it's all in the taste and all. Mm. A little bit sharp, but when you grow your own grapes, fantastic. But I'll be bottling them up for uh, for next year. I want a good wine. I want a good wine recipe. So, anybody out there got a good recipe for us? Post it online. I'll post it on the Facebook page and give all the uh, and give all a try of it. Um, I've never made wine for a long time, but uh, with the amount of grapes I'm getting up, I think I'm going to have a bash at it this year and just see if we can make a, a decent plunk for two or one. Okay then. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to knock off now. I've got the bottom of the polytunnel to do before I go up for a bit new net on that one, and then that's my job done for the night. Get myself away down home, check my greenhouse, shaved and showered, and that's it, it's for another day. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll see you up here next week.
on the plot. I may start down with one. I've had some uh, some fantastic peppers and chilies. Um, I should have shown you them this year, this week, but I'll, uh, I'm not going to bother going farther down there now. I'll leave it until I'll leave it until next week. I've had some great uh, block peppers and fantastic chilies off them. But I'll show you them next week. We'll have a walk over the plot anyway. And uh, as I say, there's been some great uh, postings on the Facebook page. Some of the crops that you've been having. Um, I think it's been quite a good year. It has, some plants have really excelled ourselves, and uh, of course, with all the shows not been off, it's been a it's been a strange one. But um, well, I'm looking, for, looking forward to next year, and of course, next week we'll be uh, we'll be concentrating on the on the um, on the spring cabbage for next year. So and the strawberries for next year. So that's what it's all about. Getting a plan right, get a time right, get a plan right, you should be spot on. Okay. If you can't wait for the videos. Jump on my Facebook page, it's uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot. Thanks for all the requests, thanks for all the uh, comments down below of the last video when I did the peppers. But um, I'm hoping I'll get up in a week's time, if I've got most of this building work done, a week's time and we'll get cracking with the uh, strawberries and the baskets and that, then we'll, uh, we'll get started on next year's cabbages. Okay, I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.